lost in Jesus name. You are regaining lost ground in the name of Jesus. Forward ever, backward never. out with the gospel of the kingdom and, and and breaking out the spell of poverty and you break poverty first the spirit of poverty by the word of God and by a renewed mind so while you are here poverty is breaking in your life as the word of God enters into your situation and then so if we are to be legitimate continually as a church number one we must be family but say family that sense of family must grow stronger again we must recognize that we are together as family we're not just individuals here say i belong to the house of god i belong to you you belong to me together we are children of the most high somebody shout a loud amen I said a loud amen so number one if we are to be a church as God wants us to be number one there must be a sense of family too prayer must happen always oh of course I made a vow before God that as long as this church remains, as long as we live, God shall not have a, or rather there will never be a day when we do not have people praying from this place. Are we together so far? We are a people of prayer. If others somehow can do without prayer I don't know how they make it but we exist our legitimacy in the spirit realm is dependent on us in the place of prayer so lift up your right hand with me and say I will pray say it again I will pray and so when you are part of this home when you are part of this family when you are doing well it is when you are in the place of prayer do not be absent in the times of prayer let that be an hour of your day preferably five if you cannot make all the other five in the morning let's pray others pray at four others at three others earlier than that but let that be an hour of prayer and then from the 14th of February right up till the 14th of this month we've been embarking on morning noon and evening prayer times make it a point that there is a substantial part of your day where there is prayer morning noon and evening and I know that testimonies shall abound to the glory of our God someone shout a loud amen are we together so for sense of God that's important prayerful family of reconciled worshipers hey reconciled worshipers that's very important reconciled worshipers be sure that you are a believer who makes all things right with others and then worship passionately worship is a weapon of warfare 
Satan doesn't like your worship. That's why he puts impediments along the way. Things that will discourage you and disqualify you from standing in the presence of God. Let all bitterness and rage and anger and clamor, evil speaking, slander, gossip, everything that could dirty your soul, remove the rubbish. How many of you remember the outline from two weeks ago? Hezekiah, a number of things he did. Number one, he reopened the temple. You remember that? Number two, he repaired the doors. How many of you were here? <laughs> that outline is not just an outline, Slobozan. That outline is matching orders for the next weeks. This is what must happen. We must open until we are properly open. Oh, you didn't ask. We must open until we are properly open. He opened the doors. Some people are not open yet. But we must walk along with them until they are. He opened the doors of the temple. The issue about gathering. When the churches were closed, it was not just a political thing only. It was a spiritual matter. A lot of people haven't been to church in a year. And they are spiritual. Spirit is broken. So we are going to speak until in the spirit it's reverberating in the hearts of the people. Church is open. The house of prayer is open. The place of worship is open. Now that's very important. It must reverberate in the hearts. And in the minds of the people. People must realize it's not a new normal that's going to be accepted to skip church or be whenever you feel like. We reject that in the name of Jesus. Church is open. And then the Bible says number two, Hezekiah repaired the doors. Repairing of the doors, interestingly, those were golden doors. I don't think gold had had a problem, but I think because they must have been very heavy doors to repair them probably it was the hinges you know a door has hinges right so if it's very heavy after some time they collapse jesus is represented by gold jesus is the door so jesus the same yesterday today and forever so Jesus would not have a problem. But Jesus, for Jesus to be functional in our life, it hinges on something. The name of Jesus in our life hinges on prayer, hinges on faith, hinges on my confidence, hinges on the word. And when your prayer life has collapsed, and when your faith is, is struggling, Though the name of Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, it doesn't work for you as it should. Jesus doesn't change, but a lot of people, the hinges that hold the door, the Bible says, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. So Christ doesn't change, but his dwelling and activity in your life depends on faith. So let the hinges be repaired. Let faith be repaired. Let prayers be repaired. Let your prayer life come alive again. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to say, yes, Lord. Number three, the Bible says, he said to the Levites, Levites were workers in the temple. He said, sanctify yourselves and sanctify the temple. In other words, number one, he reopened the doors. Number two, he repaired them. Number three, he restored the workers. I would say the workers must be restored. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Beyond the mask, I need to hear you say, workers, wake up. Say it again, workers, wake up. It's time to work again. As the church reopens, let the workers be restored. I speak that the children's church workers shall be restored. I speak that the ashes must be restored. I speak that we shall be restored again. Let the worship team lead us. First song, let us get into the spirit. Let the worshipers be restored. Every worker, oh Jesus. Let the workers in the house of God be restored. I'm class. But it's a bad thing. But it's a bad thing. But it's a bad thing. 
but in the name of Jesus, let the workers in the house be restored. Abanye basele uchwala, abanye ba yongenes dwelaze, abanye ba wele onko se matimoni. But let the workers be restored. Let be sanctified. Say restoration. I say it louder. Restoration. Oh, yeah, the beyond the mask. Restoration. Stand up and say this. I shall be restored. Oh, that's, that's it. That's it. I heard that. That's in the spirit. Say, I shall be restored. Our church is being restored. Our fellowship is being restored. Our worship is being restored. Our service. Our serving in the house of God is being restored in the name of Jesus. Now clap your hands and praise the Lord. In the name of Jesus, sit down. God bless your heart. Number one, he reopened the doors. Number two, he repaired them. Number three, he restored the workers. And then number four, he said, remove the rubbish. You remember that? I mean, remove the rubbish. So whatever it is in your life that's standing between you and God, between you and your worship life, between you and holiness, remove the rubbish, bitterness, anger, clamor, evil speaking, whatever it is that is compromising your worship to God, remove the rubbish. Lift up your right hand and say, Lord, you purify me, you cleanse me. You help me to remove the rubble in my life. So The Bible talks about the sin that so easily entangles. Have you ever seen how quickly a snake can entangle itself against? Oh, there are things before you know it. Sometimes it has entangled you. But every entanglement must come down. I said every entanglement, whether it's relational entanglement, whether it's financial entanglement, whatever it is that has entangled you, thank God this grace and this mercy. Oh God, deliver us from entanglement. Oh, somebody come alive. Come alive. Woo. Remove the rubble. Remove the rubbish. Why? It's time to worship again. It's time to see the glory. We want to see your together again children's church ministers if you are praying together tomorrow at six at church i am with you to pray together ashes you will tell me when you're gathering together let's pray together let's build this thing up worship team let's gather together pastors will be gathering together but let's restore the workers in the house of god restore our confidence oh god restore our fortunes like the streams of the south restore us oh god restore our vision restore us oh god let us see clearly once again he restored the workers number four he removed the rubble yeah, we say we remove the rubble yeah we remove the rubble anything that may stand between you and your brother and your sister we remove the rubble because we must worship together and move on and then what else did he do what else did he do he reversed the wrath he reversed the wrath he said verse 6 and 7 our fathers have stopped burning the of the, the sacrifice they stopped the incense they shut the doors they shut the doors to the vestibule as a result wrath has come upon us look when there's no prayer and worship happening wrath happens some of you will remember quickly I want to go to the other one but now let me do this 
give me those two chairs, please. Those two chairs. Some of you will remember this. Four young people come forward quickly. Some of you will remember this. We'll repeat this. But when, when there is no active prayer and worship, wrath happens. And Hezekiah says, because they stopped giving bent offerings, he says, wrath has come. So who's going to represent Jehovah? <laughs> right. This Jehovah is wonderful. <laughs> Representation of Jehovah. Now, this is the wrath of the Lord. This is Jehovah. This is the wrath of God. This is sin. Everybody say sin. Sison or es. God is holy. God's wrath is against sin. God will never reconcile with sin. Sin is the opposite of the nature of God. This is the throne of God who is seated at the right hand of the Father, who will be Jesus right here. Okay. Lamb of God, seated at the right hand of the Father. Jesus is on the throne. You will represent man. Here's the challenge. Man is loved by God. Man is loved by who? Say it again. Man is loved by who? Man is loved by who? By God. But here's the problem. Human beings are born in sin. Can you see that? Just naturally. God is holy. God's wrath is upon sin. God loves people, but people, people are born in sin. So here's a dilemma. God loves people. God hates sin. God's wrath, it is active on the human race. Always. So that is why we sing You didn't choose. You were born like this. It's 
of God. Wabonu lunchu lonke, luwe me sonwe, imi pefum lo yonke isheli, elishweni. Wasigwa, imfesane mumangaliso, watabate la guye, lonke shazo. He died and he rose again, and he's at the right hand of the Father. If any man be in Christ Jesus, he's a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. Do you see something, Slobozan? Utiko agachinjanga. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Our God is still holy. And the wrath of God, ingombogatiko, ishalisheli pesweso. So everyone who rejects the Son, stays automatically under the wrath. And Hezekiah, he reopened the doors. He repaired the doors. Number three, he restored the workers. Number four, he removed the rubbish. Number five, he said they, he reversed the wrath. How did he reverse it? He said they stopped worshiping. They stopped praying. They stopped uh, doing what is right in the sight of God. Therefore wrath, he says, as a result of them neglecting the house of God, he says, our men have died with sword and our sons and daughters are in slavery. When worship in the house of God does not happen, I'm a daughter. Alpha quickly. I'm a daughter. Alpha without direction. And number two, our sons and daughters find themselves in slavery. The slavery of Dacha. The slavery of alcohol. Abandila Bandagwetu. It's not funny. When there's no worship in the temple, the men die by the sword. Just so you know, they talk about femicide. It's a new term that, but you know, it's about killing women, but you don't know what the term is for killing men. But let me just help you understand this. Statistically, over 80% of the people who die by guns are male, not female. There are more males who are dying on a regular basis in the hands of other people. It's not about the killing of women. A person who is a killer will not say, okay, I'll kill. A killer is a killer. A murderer is a murderer. If they will murder a woman, they will murder a child, they will murder. Before God, all murderers are the same. Some murderers are soft murderers. They just murder the unborn, but they are murderers before God. The Bible so, says God saw that the whole earth was filled with violence. The spirit of murder that is making men kill other men is the same spirit of murder that's working on the men who are killing women. It's the same devil. So always remember this. When people move away from worship, wrath happens. Look at the nations of Europe when they stayed away from worship. They still have the money. They still have uh, a good life. But I've been to Europe. The youth of Europe are in trouble. They have no direction. With all the money and the education they have, they're just destroying themselves. Because without God, when the worship is neglected, the Bible, listen to this, the Bible says, the wicked shall be sent to hell and all the nations that forget God. The wicked shall be sent to hell and who else? And the nations that forget God. We shall not forget God as South Africans. I said, we shall not forget God as South Africans. The numbers that are used right now, at level one in the last year, we were 250 inside and 500 outside. Was that correct? Level one this side, with better conditions, we are put at 100 inside 
and 250 outside. There's no science, there's no logic to it. Don't beautify it with that. It is a spirit that is anti-church and anti-Christ. It shall not be allowed in our lifetime. It shall not be allowed in our lifetime. As long as, look, we did not wake up to make friends. We came to preach the gospel. We did not come to be nice. We came to say, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven we are expected to gather people in the name of Jesus. We shall gather them. This new normal shall not be our normal. We reject it in the name of Jesus. Some of you are very quiet as if you like this new normal. Look, we know this one thing for sure. Two scriptures that are burning in my spirit regularly and believers must hear them. The number one is in, is in Daniel where he says, eight, I think it's 8.25. He says, this, this ruler, this antichrist, this world dominator, he says he will cause trickery to prosper. He will, he will have a policy that causes trickery to prosper. It is trickery. But people can't hear you even if you told them the truth for the simple reason that there's a spirit of deceit that is working in them. Some of you watched this week. There was something about they're saying, okay, it's not a rollout that's been happening. It's a trial of Lendu Koya Batezaus Nleda. Zau Nleda. And Zubizanga Kama because Aiyo Lunte Batezi Iyo. So they called it whatever they called it. But now they are fighting among themselves. They're saying, Aiga Abi V. It's a trial. But the people have taken thinking it was the V. It's a deception. And I heard an official saying, well, those who think we've done wrong, they can open up a case, but I don't think we have skipped any law. That's interesting. Deception is happening at national scale because the Bible says this ruler, this antichrist ruler, will have a policy that causes deception to prosper. Even if you can tell people, they won't hear you. They are queuing for it. Why? Because it's not common sense that's going to deliver them. It is the spirit of truth that shall deliver them. I pray that you will know the truth and the truth shall set you free in the name of Jesus. Cursed is every man that trusts in man. When there's no worship, when there is no prayer, when there is no gathering, wrath happens naturally because in Mumbo, it pays with sonor anyway. And Abantu Bewele Sonwen, in Pefmulo, Ishelishwen. If we don't worship, if we don't gather to teach the word of God, if we don't gather to help people walk with God, if we don't gather, to be close to God, our generation goes to hell. We reject that in the name of Jesus. Lord, this is our time. Our forefathers preached the gospel. Those who came before us, they preached the word. They loved you, God. They served you in their lifetime. They gave the bait to us. We are running with the gospel. We will not chicken out in our lifetime. Whatever may be the case, whatever may be the trouble, God, by your grace, help us to hold on. That something tripped you along the way, rise up, but be sure that the baiting does not fall down, even if you have to go dusty, but we go on until we see him face to face. But not in our lifetime. It shall not be said of us. There arose a generation that did not know the God of Israel. We reject that. Lord, in our day, our generation shall serve you. Our generation shall gather. Our generation shall worship. Our generation shall pray. Our generation shall know the goodness of the Lord. Obobum nyama obo. Any fuel around us 
it will not settle over us in the name of Jesus. I said it will not settle over us in the name of Jesus. So let's prophesy what we want to see. Let's declare that in the days and, and the months that lie ahead, you'll start seeing in the house of God faces you thought were gone forever. Number two, you'll begin to see young people coming out of drugs and addictions of every type and begin to cry out to God again. That is our portion. That is our future in the name of Jesus. Not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. This mountain shall be removed. I said shall be removed.